So our, our theme this month is balance. And our teens have chosen the topic today that, that balance is the way to flexibility. The balance is the way to flexibility. Um, and you know, when I saw that, I thought, that's really good. That's really good. And I'm not quite sure that I'd ever put it together quite that way in my own head, that it was balance that was the way to flexibility. Um, and the first thing that came to me was literally a physical image that, you know, when we're off balance, it's like if we're off balance like this, you, you can't do a whole bunch. <laughs> Be, because you're spending all of your time trying not to fall. You're, you're spending all of your time trying to stay in the position that you're in. Catch that. W when you're off balance, you're spending all your time trying to just keep that thing going. You can't it's like you can't do anything else because you're off over here. So just think about that with your life. <laughs> think of that with your life. And, and it becomes kind of a catch-22 then because if we're really off balance, we have a harder time doing what we need to do to get the grounding so we can be flexible. It makes us go deeper and deeper, become more intransigent in whatever that is that has us off balance in the first place. Balance comes with a certain degree of flexibility. The flexibility is that which allows us to be able to move in different directions. There's a marriage ceremony that was downloaded to me years and years ago that I use in every ceremony. And you know me, I never do the exact same thing twice. I can't do the same sermon. But this ceremony, everybody, I don't care what gender they are, what age they are, whether it's a new commitment, recommitment 20 years later, everybody gets the same message. Where it likens different parts of the body to these four things, trust, love, communication, and sharing. It's called the TLCs of love. And there's one line in there when it talks about trust and how trust is likened to the spine that protects the vulnerable nervous system. And just as when, when uh, the spine is injured, that physical feel, the, the physical sensations are impaired, that when trust is injured. Relationships and emotions are impaired. And to protect the trust in your relationship so that you may remain flexible with one another. Protect the trust so that you may remain flexible with one another. So this thing called balance <clears throat> excuse me, is ultimately about what I would call combinations. This thing called balance is about learning how to negotiate in the world and to figure out how much to invest or put into what so that there is a balance. Balance doesn't necessarily mean that it is exactly equal on all sides. Say, for example, you have a life, it's 24 hours a day, and you need, during that time, you need to eat, you need to sleep, you need some exercise, you need these various things. Balance doesn't necessarily mean that you spend as much time asleep as you do awake. Balance doesn't mean you have to spend as much time eating as you do sleeping. <laughs> it, it means, some of us I think are working on that. Um, what it means is that there are going to be certain combinations that are going to be optimal. There are going to be certain combinations that are going to bring to you the most strength, the most power, 
the most flexibility. You hear me speak of this sometimes, it's, it's actually a business term, about the laws of diminishing return. This is extremely important when it comes to this thing called balance. So what the laws of diminishing return say is that for any given input or resource, you use it and it's good, it's productive, it's constructive until it's not. That for everything that we see in this bio level, there comes a point when it's optimized, when it's enough, and if you get more of that, it'll actually be counterproductive. It's like rain is good, yes? Un Till it's too much. Okay, so the same rain that you need to, to nourish your plants will wash them away if there's too much water. Okay. You need food for your body. This is good, yes? Until you have too much food. Okay. It's good to be present and care for your children, yes? Until it's too much. Because you get to a point where that same caring for them instead of empowering them will be crippling to them. Yes? You know, I, I don't care what it is. You can become fanatical about anything. And I can remember now the debates that would go on all the time. Oh, my God, there were so many debates in my house. My mother was a collegiate debater. And I actually started debating like very early. And we just, they just debated for sport, honestly. It just, anyway. So there would be this, these debates. And, and I can hear my father's voice now. He passed away um, several years ago now. And, and he would always say, moderation. That was his word of saying balance. He would say, in all things, moderation. And, and where these debates would come in was my mother is very staunch, staunch Pentecostal. Like, very, you know, very much into church, 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 church. And I have to laugh at myself now because I have the life I used to complain that she had. Um, <laughs> you're always at the church. Yeah, you don't even have any friends. All your friends are people from the church. You know, it's like... <laughs> Just the church, the church, the church, you know, and it's like, whoa. Uh, and he would always be trying to tell me in all things moderation. It's, it's like it's fine to go to church, but, but, but get a life, is what he was trying to say. Like, make sure that you have, you know, a life. Why is this important? It's important because it makes us get out of the simplistic things being good or bad. That's like real easy kind of way out to just label this thing as like it's good or it's bad. That really isn't the case with most things in life. It isn't that it's good or it's bad. It's that it's good for you to a point, and then perhaps it's not. But this thing called balance, just like with your body temple, everybody's not regulated the exact same way. It would be like the doctor giving everybody the exact same prescription. We don't all need the exact same prescription. We all need certain things, but we may need them in different combinations. And it's going to be upon you to figure out your combination. Any of you ever been in a one-on-one -on -one relationship, like a romantic relationship, and you both weren't calibrated the same way? Whatever that is, one's need for noise and stimulation, 
versus another one's need for, for, for quiet, you know, or activity, um, choices and different kinds of things, and there's a way of having to negotiate and work that out. A lot of times, we don't even let ourselves find out what our internal balance is because we're so busy trying to calibrate to other people. <laughs> Listen to what I just said. We're so busy trying to calibrate to other people, whatever that is. Adolescence is really known for that, where, you know, it's the group. This is my peers. Everybody's doing this. You may not even like it, but everybody's doing it, and you don't want to feel like you're different than everybody else. We really don't outgrow that. I would like to say that we do, but most of us don't. We just learn to manage it a little bit better. And too often in our society, we register love by emulation. We love, measure love by imitation and sameness. So I know how much you love me. I know how much you're part of this group. I know how much you share this identity because you act like we do, you talk like we do, you feel like we do, you say what we say, you go where we go, we do what you do, and that becomes the measurement. So the dilemma in this is that a lot of times we don't even want to figure out what really works for us lest it be perceived like we don't love them or lest we fear we won't get their love back or that somehow or another we're going to be different in some kind of way that's going to throw it off kilter. There will often come these times in our life where we have big interruptions, things that kind of knock us off our center things that knock us out off of our trajectory that we've been on, the, 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 the treadmill of our daily whatevers. Maybe we get injured or we have some kind of illness. Maybe there's some kind of loss or change of employment or something happens in our relationships or something like that. Many times, it takes crises before we actually pay attention to balance. It takes something drastic coming along to help us see, I'm off. <laughs> I'm off. I've been off, but I didn't even know I was off. One of my favorite lines in the Spirit Downloads is that drama is optional. Drama is optional. Now, that's nothing against like drama as an art. I love drama. I love movies. Okay. I, I really do. I, and, and I love theater. But the point is we don't always have to have a drama. We don't need the two by four <laughs> upside the head all the time. In fact, the first song that Valerie and Joy and I wrote together was one of those spirit downloads called A Whisper is Enough. A whisper is enough. You know, what will it take for you to hear me? What will it take for me to get through? A quiet whisper is enough for me, but what will it take for you? Just breathe that in for a second. Any spiritual tradition worth its salt will be speaking of this. They will be using different kinds of metaphors or whatnot, but they'll all be saying the same thing, that we get off 
And when we're too far over here, it's then at the expense of something else over here. So not only is there the law of diminishing returns, where if we keep doing the same thing over and over again, no matter how good it is, that it gets to the point where we're going to get counter, counter results, counterproductive results. There's also this, another business concept, the opportunity cost. The opportunity cost, which basically says if you have these investments or these resources and you put it over here, then it can't be put over here. If I only have one egg, and I put it in a cake, I can't have a scrambled egg. It's these choices that we're having to make all the time. If you're here in this room now, your opportunity cost is whatever else you could be doing besides being in this room. But somewhere you decide that being in this room, for whatever reason, is how you're going to invest your time right now. The opportunity cost. At what price? So we find a lot of times when we're off balance and we're off kilter and we're so busy digging in to this spot here that I'm trying to stay with, at what cost? What else is it that I could be doing? What else is it? that I could be doing. Freedom and anger cannot occupy the same spot. That's something that I learned from my guys in prison, the lifers. In fact, my, my TED Talk Berkeley two years ago was, was around that, that freedom and anger cannot occupy the same spot. So no matter how much I may want to be in my indignation and my righteous anger, it has a cost. And that cost is my freedom. I had to learn that lesson the hard way. I was angry a lot growing up. I mean, like, a lot, like a lot. <laughs> but I had to realize that I was so snared in it that I wasn't free. I was trying to do all this social justice work to get free, but it took me to realize that all of that anger and all of that rage was sucking up all of the energy so that I felt under it. It felt like it was controlling me, like I was always fighting up against something. I was off balance. I was off balance for the joy. I was off balance for the grace and the ease. I was trading it in, down with the struggle. You know, I, I, I was trading in the struggle for the grace. You know, I, 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 was, I was trading in the activism for the ease. Okay. So what I've had to learn through life to do is find the balance. Once again, it's not so much the either or. It's where is this balance? Where can I find the balance so that I can still be a seeker, a truth warrior, so to speak, but not at the expense of my joy and not at the expense of my grace, not at the expense of knowing that, that like God is in control. So to have that balance, 
It's going to mean us taking a really hard look at what is this that we are in fact trading in and is it worth it? In this spiritual tradition that we're in, we don't do a bunch of thou shalt nots. We don't do a lot of behavior modification. Whatever, don't drink, don't smoke, don't commit adultery, don't do this, da 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 da. We don't, we don't do a bunch of that. So what I found is that you could do all of that for show. You could do all of that to try to fit in, but if it's not genuine, and if it's not coming from your own place of authenticity, there's not a healing that's there. It's almost a concept of the dry drunk. Okay, you're not drinking, but you're still just as abusive and unhappy as, as, as if you were drinking. So you're not drinking, wow. <laughs> That, that doesn't help. It's like when Jesus says in Scripture, it doesn't matter if you're not murdering your brother, if you're killing him with your words. Like, yes, you may have literally obeyed the commandment, don't murder, thou shalt not commit murder, but if you're killing them with your words anyway, what difference does it make? With, with, if you're not living up to that. So, so we don't do a bunch of thou shalt not. Because what we know is that if you learn the spiritual principles, if you learn to recalibrate up to a higher truth, there will be something internal that will pull you. And whatever that is that you were doing that was so off won't feel that good anymore. It just won't feel that good anymore. You'll max out. You'll hit that law of the diminishing returns so that being nasty or lack of transparency, or trying to hedge and get ahead of everything and control, like whatever that stuff is that you've been doing at your human level, you'll feel spiritually off balance. This isn't working for me anymore. This worked for me really well up until now, and now it's not working for me anymore. I, I, re <laughs> I, I remember a couple of times when I was teaching sacred sexuality and some people came up to me and they told me that they were upset because now they couldn't engage in the kind of just really casual sexual activity that they used to engage in because they perceived themselves now as such energy fields and an energy exchange and there was a sacredness to sexuality now that was shifting how they behaved. There's nothing that I could have said as an edict or a mandate that would have gotten them to that point. It's like that had to be an internal job. So a lot of times people mistake us for being just permissive because they're not hearing a lot of edicts. But that's not it. It's that if you are doing the work it will be revealed to you what you need to do for the balance in your life. And everybody doesn't need the exact same thing. Some people need to find their voice and speak up. Some people, quite frankly, need to shut up. <laughs> Some people are just like taking up way too much space and have got to learn to reel it back. Some people are needing to, to find some agency in their life and to realize that it's a co-creative universe and they can speak their word and power and things can happen. 
And there's other people who have been so willful all of their life, taking everything in their hands to try to make it happen, they need to trust. And let it go. And let something else come in there. And all of it's true. We all need to speak up a little more and shut up a little more somewhere. All of us need to find a little bit more agency, and we need to learn how to trust and let go a little bit more. But that's according to your divine plan. That's your plan. That's between you and your God. Not between you and your significant other, not between you and your kids and you and your parents, or you and your job, or you in the community, or you in the nation, or you in the church. That's for you in your own authentic self. And you'll know, you'll know. Don't confuse this with feeling good. Because the road to balance a lot of times doesn't feel good. Because the road to balance sometimes means letting go of some stuff we've been clinging on to. Getting into balance sometimes means stepping into some unfamiliar territory or some places that, that I've been afraid to go to. Maybe it means doing a little bit more forgiveness work to find that balance to be able to open up to compassion and support. Maybe I've lost my trust in people. Who knows? Maybe to find that balance, it means that there's this certain something that I've been clinging on to. It's been my own little security blanket, my place of refuge and, and, and retreat. Maybe I'm going to have to take the training wheels off my bicycle that's been holding me up. Maybe I need to graduate from the tricycle to a bicycle. <laughs> Maybe there's something. I I'm getting an image now. In one of my spirit letters, it was saying to me that it says, you can... You can soar with the eagles, or you can flit around with the pigeons. The choice is yours, and I will support you in all of your choices, always. Which, quite frankly, is good news and bad news. <laughs> <laughs> that the universe supports us in all of our choices. And I remember a number of years after that, it was just one of those things that kind of, hmm. Because in my mind, it seemed like there was a value judgment being put on like eagles above pigeons. And, and my spirit, think, like it never does that. It never like values one thing more than another. So I was out at the beach. You know, we're here on the, the central coast, so we're right close to the water. And I looked up one day, and I saw pigeons flocking over. I mean, it wasn't my first time seeing pigeons, but I just really paid attention to the pigeons. And then I could hear that spirit voice talking to me again. And I was watching them flap their wings, like really hard and really fast. And I said, oh, pigeons flit. Pigeons flit. And the moment that clicked in, I heard that spirit voice say, they expend a tremendous amount of energy, but don't go that far. Listen to that. They expend a tremendous amount of energy and don't go that far. Now, obviously, the aerodynamics of a pigeon is different from an ego, but I immediately got 
what Spirit was saying, because I'll get this message off and come up a little higher. Come up a little higher and soar. That there are currents that are up higher, and the eagles are going up higher, and they're not moving so much by their own might with this flit thing. They're, they're riding the currents in the way that they're more gliding. More gliding. And I got it. Like, oh, I get what Spirit's trying to tell me now. And more and more, I've been trying to catch the current. Been trying to catch, catch that wave of the wind. So I'm not doing this so much. Okay. Balance. Balance. And as with all the spiritual quality, this is not something we have to chase after. It's not something we have to make happen. What I'm trying to say is that it is already within us. It's more of a discovery. It's more of a revelation and releasing it. That each of us has our own internal balance. It's not static. It may shift from time to time. Different things have their seasons. As you age, your propensity towards certain things or your, your you know, values or whatnot, there's, you know, there's no way. As a late, you know, I'm, I'm at the tail end of the baby boom, and, you know, there's no way that everything I used to do in my 20s is what I want to do now. It's not good or bad. It's just I'm not wired that way. Now, I need a lot more quiet. <laughs> I need a lot more solitude now than what I needed then. You know, when I was a party animal, I actually had a company. That's what I used to do. I used to throw the parties. I did. And it was cool. You know, and, and I would still enjoy that from time to time, but that can't be my occupation anymore. But it, it's good to be somebody else's. The moral of this story at the end is don't get stuck in the this is just the way I am. Or I've always been this way. Because for you to find that place of balance within you, you might need to open up to what's, what's good and right for me now. May not be the same way that it looked before. But you'll know, you know. Like that spirit voice always says, you don't have to know where you're going to know you're headed in the right direction. There's something that'll tell you, whether you like it or not. <laughs> but you'll know, this is moving me towards the balance that I need in my life. Yes? Hmm. Let's pray. As we turn within in this moment, we allow ourselves to open up wide to possibilities that we haven't even considered before. We open up wide to the majesty of our own being, made in the image and the likeness of the only thing that is. We open up wide to celebrate life. Not just life in the abstract, but life as my life. Right here and right now. Everything that has ever been is available now. All the truth there has ever been, all of the love that has ever been, all of the power, all of the passion, 
All of the creativity that has ever been in the world is always available at every place at all times, and that means right where I am. Even in the mint, it's right there. There's not more of it today than there was yesterday or, or less today than there was yesterday. There's not more often the hills of Tibet than there are right here. Nobody has more. It's all right here. And in this moment right now, we have the audacity to claim it. To claim it. Not just that we have it, but that it's who we are. What we're looking for, we're looking with. We are the love that we seek. We are the abundance. We are the creativity. We are the balance. We are the faith. We are the trust. We are the courage. We are the strength. We are the wholeness. It's who we are. Every tradition tells us do not judge by the appearances. Don't judge by the appearances. It's illusion. It's maya. It's the trickster energy. Hmm. Interesting, the word devil literally means the deceiver. The trickster energy. No! We look beyond it. We look through it. So we have the courage to stand before the storms of our life and say, peace be still. Peace is right in the middle of the storm. We have the courage to stand before all of the aches and the pains and the illnesses and the injuries of the body temple. And just like with the storm, to look through it, beyond it, to the perfect pattern of health that is underlying and to call it forth. Health come forth. Come forth. Where is the health now? It's in that same body that looks like it's sick. We activate the chi energy. We don't get rid of disease, we increase health. The same is true in all of our body of affairs, our economic body, our body politic. Peace, be still. We have the courage to look right smack beyond all of the dis eat. the divisiveness, whatever that is, and to call forth the health. To call forth the beloved community. To call forth the compassion. The wholeness. The love of our neighbor and the love of our enemy. As ourselves. We say thank you for coming through as all needs met. Guidance, direction, financial prosperity, divine right resonance, divine right transportation, relationships nurturance. It's all there. Authentic creative expression. Doors of opportunity opening we didn't even know were there to knock on. Every divine idea comes with its own supply. It's not ours to figure out all of the how, just to stand in the what of the possibility. Here. Now. 
We pray this for ourselves. We pray for all the prayer requests that have come in. Not just the inner light, but the prayers all over the world. Everything is either a call from love or a call for love. The news is one big prayer request. Lord, lift us up where we belong. Thank you for blessing this spiritual community. Thank you for our new home and our divine right residence. Thank you for resources and the coffers always being full. It is good. It is done. We get out of the way. We allow it to be. And so it is.